If you're here, now, you're on a small planet called Earth. You're a member of the human enterprise. As a member of society, and as a human being, your ultimate goal, whether conscious of it or not, is to avoid pain and maximize happiness. However, realizing happiness has become hindered by our social constructions. Ultimately, we have managed to confuse happiness with the maximization of utility. We have collectively allowed our perception of our world to become that of a hostile one, of a doggy dog -eat -dog nature. We attempt to acquire as many material possessions as possible, as fast as we can. Our dominant economic system has captured this ideology. The extraction of resources and production of commodities are being continually streamlined in the name of economic growth. The amount and variety of things produced for us skyrockets, just as our perception of need for them continues to rise. When these things merge, we begin to pay less and less attention to the products we consume, where they come from, and how they affect our world. When we are constantly striving to outwit and outdo our fellow man, time can be regarded as scarce, and food, our very connection to the earth, may not receive the attention it deserves. A competitive economic system focused on providing us with simple, time-efficient, and diversified products has been applied to food production and distribution, but at what cost? Every aspect of the food industry in the Western world has been conditioned by the dominant economic paradigm of our era. This has resulted in increased production through mechanization and diversification of production, and has resulted in a corporatized food system that has spiraled out of control. Agricultural policies are becoming increasingly favorable for large-scale industrialized agriculture, focusing on short-term mass production over long-term sustainability. There are many consequences. Here are the facts. In Canada, large farms, or farms with gross farm receipts of $250,000 or higher, rose by 13.8% between 2001 and 2006, while farms below that economic threshold dropped by 10.5% in the same time frame. Between 1988 and 2002, Canada tripled its amount of agricultural exports, yet realized farm income for all farms went down 24% during this time accompanied by a loss of 11% of the nation's family farms. From 1986 to 2009, Canadian and governmental subsidies for agriculture increased by 26%, up to $7.2 billion annually. Yet the primary beneficiaries of this funding are the grain, oilseed, and red meat sectors. In the same time period, subsidies for dairy, poultry, and eggs increased by 70%. The number of farms in Canada has fallen 60% over the last 50 years, while the overall farm size has increased by 141%. Canada lost over 17,000 farms between 2001 and 2006 alone. As large farms displace small farms, small farmers are forced out of communities, along with a support network of workers that may otherwise have been able to contribute on smaller, more labor-intensive farms. When farmers, support workers, and their families are forced out, it can undermine the local economy of a given region. And when growers focus on producing food for a globalized free market, they may fail to meet the needs of local inhabitants, focusing instead on securing profits in a global market with little to no connection to the localities in which the food is produced. There has been an increased tightening of corporate hold over food production in the Western world. Each link in the agri-food chain in North America is dominated by fewer than 10 multi-million dollar transnational corporations. Walmart is now the largest buyer and seller of food in the United States, and feeds a third of the entire nation. In the United States, five companies control almost 90% of the entire beef packing industry. Many food agri-corporations have vertical control of the industry, from production to distribution. In 2007, only five corporations, including Monsanto and DuPont, controlled 57% of the global seed market. Industrial agriculture can result in the intensification of production, the growing of monocultures of identical crops, overconsolidated meat production resulting in the inhumane conditions of feedlots and factory farms, and the use of fossil fuel dependent machinery and synthetic inputs such as fertilizers and agrochemicals.